This is the schematic diagram of continuous distillation column. In this diagram, you are given, you can see the feed inlet and the product outlet. So you have two product outlet, which is at the top of the column. And you also have a product outlet at the bottom of the column. Okay, so we call the product at the bottom is the bottom product and product at the top of the column is called distillate. The reboiler is used at the bottom part of the column is to directly heat the input materials in the reboiler. The condenser is used at the top of the column to condense the vapor collected from the top of the column. The feed used uh, in this particular column is normally in liquid phase or in gas phase or maybe a mixture of liquid and gas phase. These are called the condition of the feed. In this column, the liquid mixtures will be separated. The vapor mixtures rises from the reboiler, passes over the column trays, and then it is fully condensed by the condenser that you have at the top of the column. The condensate runs down the column, counter current to the vapor through the tray back into the reboiler. At each tray, the rising vapor uh, attempts to achieve equilibrium with the liquid condensate thus affecting both mass and heat transfer. In this ideal case, the rising vapor should be in equilibrium with the liquid but in actual columns, complete exchange does not always take place. The efficiency of the trays in the distillation column can be evaluated using the number of theoretical plates required to achieve the same separation as the actual column. As the purity of the distillate is dependent to a very large extent on the number of plates, determination of the number of theoretical plates in a column is very important in designing a distillation unit.